Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. As you guys may or may not already know, Intel's fourth generation core series processors, codenamed Haswell, are here. And they come along with an all new socket and an all new chipset. So all of these motherboards feature a Z87 chipset with an LGA 1150 socket, meaning that you do not have backwards compatibility with existing third generation core processors, and you can't use your new fourth generation processor on an old board. So I guess it's time to learn a little bit about some of the Z87 board options that are out there. Let's kick things off with MSI. This new platform brings with it OC Genie 4. Now the original OC Genie only overclocked your CPU frequency and as it's progressed it overclocks more and more things to the point now where it overclocks your integrated GPU, it can enable XMP profiles, all kinds of good stuff. Now we've got two boards here from MSI, the Z87 GD65 Gaming, which is their premium gaming oriented motherboard with features such as Killer E2200 networking, as well as Sound Blaster Cinema software integration along with their Audio Boost technology, which uses audio grade capacitors and integrates a headphone amp, giving you a better audio experience. It's got a pretty darn optimal PCI Express slot layout, giving you up to three PCIe 16X slots and four PCIe 1X slots. So if you have two cards, they're gonna run in 8X, 8X mode. They've got their same Dragon themed PWM heat sinks that we saw on the Z77 gaming series. And you see onboard switches for everything from power and reset to OC Genie as well as the go to BIOS button, which I think is really cool because it allows you to shut down the computer and boot directly into the BIOS without worrying about mashing on the delete key or anything like that. MSATA has been integrated if you want to run an MSATA SSD and it has V checkpoints as well so you can monitor the voltage of the individual components using a multimeter rather than relying on software. Front USB 3 is included and it has 8 SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports as well as a multi BIOS switch so that if you accidentally brick your BIOS during a flash or something like that you don't have to worry about any problems. Now that was the gaming oriented board and the Empower Max is the overclocking oriented board. So the first thing you'll notice about it is that it comes with wireless N as well as Bluetooth integrated. You can actually take that off if you don't want to use it. And the Empower Max, I think, is one of the sexiest boards that MSI has ever made. It has dual 8-pin connectors, very, very beefy PWM cooling with a super pipe. It's got V checkpoints as well as two front USB 3 headers. So they're both over here on the right. One of them is right angle, which I personally really like. Eight SATA 36 gigabit per second connectors, as well as their LED post readout. Onboard switches for even more stuff. So you got OC Genie, power reset, as well as tuning buttons. So you can actually change the frequency of your system using buttons that are built right into the board. The same PCI Express layout as the GD65 Gaming and the Audio Boost technology is present on this board as well. So even though it's overclocking features are sort of more tuned towards overclocking than gaming, there's absolutely no reason not to get something like an Empower for a gaming system. And remember guys, Empower boards get only the finest quality control out of any consumer grade motherboard. Next up, we've got Gigabyte. And in the last couple of generations of product, they've really stepped up their game, not only in terms of features, but also in terms of the general looks. And this is more of a refinement of that. These are some of the best looking boards I have ever seen. And let's face it, that matters to enthusiasts today. This one right here is the Z87X UD3H from Gigabyte, and it comes with almost everything, which is unusual for a UD3 class board. So you've got onboard switches for reset, clear CMOS, as well as power and changing the BIOS, which is actually also has an LED indicator now, which is very, very cool. It's got an onboard post LED readout. It's got front USB 3 auxiliary power for the PCI Express slots, even though there are only three slots and they run at 16x or 8x, 8x. I mean, I guess it's nice to have that so you don't risk burning out your 24 pin. Eight SATA 36 gigabit per second connections, another USB 3 port for a total of four front USB 3 and headphone amped onboard audio. 
which we've only really seen in the past from Gigabyte on their G1 series of boards. So even though this is a more value-oriented option in terms of pricing, in terms of the actual features that are getting delivered, you're not really missing out on much other than a lack of integrated Wi-Fi, which not everyone will use. And that looks like kind of it. You've also even got voltage checkpoints, so you can use a multimeter and check your voltages if you're, uh, if you're into extreme overclocking. Which leaves us with ASUS. We've got a couple of ASUS boards here today, the Pro and the Deluxe Z87 boards, but we're gonna focus more on the Deluxe because the Pro is sort of most of what you find here, but with a couple of things cut down. So first of all, Wi-Fi Go has been significantly improved this time around. So the built-in Wi-Fi, at least on the Deluxe level board, is now AC. Remember guys, Wi-Fi Go enables easy file sharing as well as remote control of the PC. And on the Pro board, it's N, but on the Deluxe board, AC wireless built into the board. And I've seen tests of this that show it in excess of 800 megabit per second actual sustained transfer rate, which is very, very, very compelling. So they've significantly upgraded the voltage regulator module, so we can expect whatever happens with your Haswell. Remember guys, Haswell is going to be much more sensitive to small fluctuations because it runs at much lower voltages. You know that one of these boards is going to take care of it with the all fully digital PWM. Now not only that, but ASUS has their TPU and EPU processors integrated into this board in something that they're calling Dual Intelligent Processors 4. This allows you to do a number of things that you could already do, such as uh, you know put your motherboard into performance mode versus power saving mode, but it's got a couple other cool things as well. Now it integrates really well with the fan control that ASUS already had on their boards, which can also now be set within the BIOS, which is very, very cool. And it has a new mode called an away mode that significantly significantly saves power when you're not using it, but allows your computer to still function if you use it as something like a file server when you're away from it. Last but not least, it allows you to set the TDP target for your CPU. So let's say you buy a regular desktop CPU, but you go, okay, I don't need as much performance. I want it to consume less power. You can tell your motherboard, oh, okay, well, keep it, keep it running at this TDP, and the board will dynamically make sure that it doesn't exceed that. They've also got their new patent pending CPU fan connector, which detects automatically if you have a three pin or a four pin fan and sets up the voltage control of it correctly. Regardless of all of that, dedicated buttons for TPU and EPU, front USB 3, SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second connection. Something I didn't mention about some of the other boards as well is that they all support SLI and Crossfire. So it'll be a rare or very low end uh, Z87 board that does not support SLI and pretty much all of them, as long as they have two PCI Express 60 next slots will support Crossfire. They've upgraded their post LED readout. So on the deluxe board, you actually get two of them. So that'll be fun. Maybe you can put like four letter words on there or something. That functionality is not enabled right now, but who knows what the future holds. And onboard switches are integrated into the deluxe board. The Pro board gets most of that. So it gets Wi-Fi N, it only gets two LED post readouts, it gets a few fewer SATA 3.6 gigabit per second ports, and it is generally the more value-oriented board. One of the things that ASUS has done across the board <laughs> with their Z87 products is they've optimized the BIOS navigation experience, adding things like being able to make notes in the BIOS, as well as put all of your favorite functionality in one place. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips showcasing some Z87 boards, and I hope this gives you some idea of where to start for your Core i5 or i7 fourth generation upgrade.